Hello everyone, welcome to our bandside worship on this first Sunday after Christmas Day. is a Christian poet. In one of his poems he says, Christmas is really for the children, especially for children who like animals, stables, stars and babies wrapped in swaddling clothes. Then there are wise men, kings in fine robes, humble shepherds, and a hint of rich perfume. Easter is not really for the children unless accompanied by a cream-filled egg. It has whips, blood, nails, a spear, and allegations of body snatching. It involves politics, God, and the sins of the world. It is not good for people of a nervous disposition. They would do better to think on rabbits, chickens, and the first snowdrop of spring. Or they'd do better to wait for a rerun of Christmas without asking too many questions about what Jesus did when he grew up or whether there's any connection. You know, the truth is that for all of its joy and celebration, Christmas too has its violent, sinister, troubling, disturbing side. It has its fair share of weapons and blood, politics and sin. Throughout Advent, we reminded ourselves week by week of how the light shines in the darkness and how the darkness cannot defeat the light or vanquish it or extinguish it. But that doesn't mean the darkness isn't real. Sometimes very, very real. It is. Today in worship, we'll be taking time to think about often overlooked, painful dimensions of the Christmas story to see what questions they pose for our faith and our living in our times. Today we'll be reflecting 
on the dark side of Christmas. But now scripture calls us deeper into worship, reminding us of the deepest truth. And it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And we have beheld his glory. So may the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. May the word of Christ dwell in us richly. we come into God's presence in prayer, let us pray. At this stage of the Christmas season, O God, we give thanks for the mystery, the miracle, and the questions thrown up by the story of the birth of Jesus. We give thanks for the light shining 
in our darkness. A light, no shocking, overwhelming trauma, no pain of human suffering, no cloud of despair can completely put out. By that light, lead us from the tangle and fear of our confused and broken ways to set our feet on the paths of hope and peace, justice and righteousness, paths that lead to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, listen to two readings from Matthew and some thoughts they give rise to. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. While shepherds and magi adored and worshipped the baby Jesus, Joseph had been in the background, quietly watching and caring for his wife. Now he was urgently called to action to protect the Son of God. Escaping the jealous rage of Herod, the family fled southward to Egypt, the land from which their ancestors had been brought up out of slavery. Today we give thanks for all who protect the weak and vulnerable of our world and pray that they may be given the wisdom and determination to carry out their calling. And we give thanks for the divine love that uses our frailty to support one another in need. We pray for guidance in all times of danger and uncertainty. We acknowledge also that we do not always open ourselves fully to God's ways of guiding. We too often stand aside while others act to help those in need. So on account of this part of the Christmas story, we ask that God will make us more ready to care not only for those nearest, but for the stranger and outcast, the homeless and those who flee from persecution. Notice how, in this story, after all the emphasis on the guidance of the starlight, it is God's protecting darkness which conceals the flight of Mary, Joseph and Jesus from the dark, insecure rage of Herod, which feared the defenseless baby. Notice how the family had to leave the promised land and go back through the wilderness to the place of slavery. Even Egypt, with all its associations, was safer than Israel with its capital, Jerusalem, a name which contains a form of the Hebrew word for peace. But there was no peace. And notice how God who had carried God's people in the wandering years, made the return journey in a mother's arms. Divine power and glory and majesty concentrated into a vulnerable bundle of humanity. Mary, Joseph and Jesus were not the first to flee from tyranny nor the last to stumble across a strange frontier to seek safety among alien faces, when even the most ordinary and familiar of tasks could spell danger or doom. Think about how, in time, the baby, the child, the refugee toddler would welcome the stranger, the outcast, the despised, the unprotected, with a royal love that kings dared not feel because the ground beneath their thrones would be shaken. Let us pray. On wanderers without a home, Lord have mercy. On refugees scattered by war and violence, Lord have mercy. On our hardness of heart, Lord, have mercy. Amen.
When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, a voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. Like all tyrants, Herod feared any challenge to his power, his prestige, his position. No star could ever guide him to the real king of kings. And he thought he had made himself secure when he murdered all the infants in the region of Bethlehem. He did not know that the one he sought was safely away from his vicious reach. And that in truth, he himself had not long to live. The amazing birth of Jesus brought a cruel response from a twisted, calloused, evil heart. Faced with innocence and vulnerability, the same still happens in our world. Today, we give thanks for the depth of faith that keeps light alive in the darkness, seeing divine love at work, even in suffering. May God help us to hold fast when hope fails and understanding is dim. To trust in Jesus, the one titled Christ, who brings new life out of death. We acknowledge that too often we close our eyes, our ears, our hearts, to the suffering that does not come close to us. We too readily ignore the abuse of power that does not impinge on us. May we find the awareness and strength and courage to speak for those whose voices are not heard until they are able to speak for themselves and always to reach out in love to those whose hearts are broken. Notice how death came with a new face into the village, not with the familiar sword of sickness or striking through the dangers that evade a mother's care. Notice how the royal swords forged for clashing with other royal swords, flashed like lightning. And after, mothers cried out to an empty sky from where no angels descended, demanding to know why God had forsaken them. Notice that it was not the first or the last time innocence would be harried into death. And the pain is rarely, if ever, lessened by being caught up in a communally visited horror. The mystery of suffering is never made clear. What the story tells is that one mother was spared to hold her child in her arms, then in her heart until the time of agony arrived at the point of a soul-piercing sword. Think about how one child lived to grow into the fullest form of manhood, then to enter the pool of torment he had been saved from as a child, how he entered that pool to break the tyranny of death and all its ways. Let us pray. Lord, take our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Restore our eyes to a semblance of innocence and move us to address the suffering we see. Amen. You know, as much as at any other point in the deeply textured richness of the Christmas story, what we have heard and thought about today asks a question of us and requires a decision from us. It's a question about our deepest orientation beyond all the other orientations we may have. It's a question about the lives we believe we are called to live and the risks we are prepared to take on account of our growing understanding of the God we encounter in the Jesus born in Bethlehem and the reactions he engenders. Will we be people of darkness or light, selfishness or solidarity, violence or peace, greed or generosity, 
exclusion or inclusion, rejection or embrace, fear or love, death and the end of all possibility, or life and the opening of endless possibility. Away back in 1970, a reflective religious writer called Richard Wilcox was living in Germany. Coming up to Christmas, he met a young man on the street. The young man was hungry and totally alone. He kept his head down. His name was Mudir. He had fled from Pakistan and was turned away from England where his sister lived. He couldn't speak German and he was afraid. Wilcox and his wife took him in, got him something to eat and told him he need not fear. They became friends. Because of the season, Wilcox and his wife thought, on to us a son is given. The couple and the young man stead friends as he found his feet and made his way in a new world. Later, two children called Wilcox and his wife godparents. As Wilcox puts it, Mudir is a Muslim and I am a Christian. And in the universe somewhere, God is smiling. Fifty years on, how are we going to live? Here in Banside? Here in Banbridge, in this world, as we find it at the close of this coronavirus pandemic year, let us pray. God of love, whose ways are not our ways, but who promises to be with us in everything. Today, among all the levels and types of hurt, danger and harm, we know of in our world. We pray especially for children tossed upon the world too young. Shelter all your children, those in flight, those delighting in freedom, and those whose innocence is at risk. Be with each one to bring them to where they may grow in wisdom and stature and the strength of a love that will last. We pray for the child who cries with no one to hear, the orphaned, the bereaved, those with parents missing for whatever reason. We pray for refugees on the road and sea, for those forced to live among strangers, for those who travel in terror of the night, among people traffickers and smugglers, and those who have lost the sense of the sacred. And we pray for ourselves, that you will unlock our frozen resources and closed borders and hardened hearts. We pray for grace to forgive when we have been hurt and the grace not to speak where forgiveness is for others to bestow. So we pray for those who cannot forgive that one day they will understand that the past cannot be changed but is held by a God who will never cease to value lost lives and carry the cost. We pray for all who suffer in war and for parents who cannot protect their young. We pray for those who joy in the birth of a child and those who mourn like Rachel. We pray for those who grieve the passing of a loved one this year. We pray for lands ruled by oppression and dictatorship. We pray for each act of kindness and consideration that saves and heals, that it may be magnified and bear fruit 100 fold. We pray for peace so that the Lord of peace, the provider of bread and companions, may rule our lives and change the way we relate to one another and the earth. We pray for those who turn the world in their skilled hands. May they have the courage of Joseph to dream the truth and waken to live it at whatever the cost to themselves. In our thinking and on our journeys, hear us now as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, in all the ways we can, may we love and serve the Lord, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, our Friend. And may this God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us from all harm, all wrongdoing, and ever at the service of our neighbour. Amen. <laughs> 